Welcome! This is Mini Disc Monday 17, and as you know, throughout the month of October, this series is going weekly because we are focusing on and celebrating the work of a great 1990s band. They started in the 80s, and technically, it's just one guy with various session musicians. I've got all of their albums that are available on mini disc. That's four of them, hence why you're getting one a week in October. I'm of course talking about Lightning Seeds and this and the next three weekly instalments of Mini Disc Monday are all part of the Lightning Seeds month theme here on the channel. Also, there's going to be a weekly smule from me and a singing partner of my choice. Don't say you haven't been warned about those. I was just really excited to listen to all these Lightning Seeds albums again. Give them some love. I mean, everyone really knows Ian Brody and Lightning Seeds, mostly from Football's Coming Home, Three Lions. And rightly so, as football songs go, it is very good, but they've done other, and in my opinion, far superior work. And hopefully throughout this month here on Mini Disc Monday, we can drill down into it. So let's kick off with the Lightning Seeds third studio album. I did actually buy the reissues of their first two albums on vinyl. Um, last month you would have seen in Records Roundup 73, I believe it was, Cloud Cuckoo Land and Sense. Those albums never came out on mini disc, but their first one to do so was Jollification. So the third album from Browdy, aka Lightning Seeds, on the epic label it's got the famous well at least famous for me in this country as i used to see it all the time when i was doing my cd shopping back in the mid to late 90s the nice price sticker um i think this was the first lightning seeds album i ever owned but i had it on cd originally i'm very familiar with this it's probably the studio album from the lightning seeds that i'm most familiar with but i did listen to it again just now so i could talk about it in a little more detail before i do that quick look at the case and the disc etc case is in nice condition no complaints there's your disc with the album artwork on the front course it's got the strawberry with the heads in it the faces in it and on the back is track listing and yeah a bit of copyright bump as well the booklet is nothing to particularly write home about but it's pleasant enough it's got pages of lyrics with all these strawberry motifs really nice artwork i think it's mark farrow who designed the artwork for jollification he also did a lot of album and single art for Pet Shop Boys back in the day. Really good designer, one of my favourite graphic designers in the music area. This album, I think it got top 20. That's the thing with Lightning Seeds, Three Lions did very well and they had another top 10 single, which I'll talk about next week. They kind of were never A tier, but I think people forget about a lot of their other work that did well but just didn't quite hit the heights. I would say this is probably their most well-known studio album, certainly. And of course, they released a lot of really catchy, really good pop singles over the course of the career, and they're still going today, of course. Anyway, the tracks on Jollification, Perfect starts out, that was a single. There was four singles released from this album. All four of them got to the top 30 at least. I think three were in the top 20 although one of them did have a reissue was it didn't do very well the first time. But Perfect is a perfect opener, really. Great single, always loved that track. Track two is Lucky You. That was the single that didn't do very well. It got to like 50 something originally, and then about a year later it was reissued and got in the mid part of the top 20, I believe. Track three, Open Goals. Uh, if I'm remembering rightly, that was kind of like a John Lennon-y piano sort of vibe to it, which I really enjoyed, actually. I mean, Ian Browdy, fellow Liverpudlian to Lennon and the rest of the Beatles, obviously. So there's got to be some influence there. I think some reviewers sort of considered this a little bit sort of overproduced Britpop, really, and that's a sort of charge Lightning Seeds have had, certainly throughout the 90s, if not longer. 
that uh, Ian Browley he likes his production, he likes things to sound clean and smooth and with effects and stuff like that. And it may not be to everyone's taste, but I've always been a fan. Track four is Change, another single and another fantastic one. All the singles on this album were brilliant. Track five, I think might be my favorite on the album. Certainly my favorite non-single release off this album, Why Why Why. It's really a female vocal led track. Ian Browdy provides kind of like backing vocals, but mainly it's a female singer. Not one I'd heard of, I did look her up when I was looking up the information for this album on the internet. And um, she was just someone who kind of got a basic credit for her essentially lead vocals in uh, Why Why Why, but it's a fantastic track that I do urge you. I mean, I urge you to check the whole album out, but certainly listen to Why Why Why. Track six is Marvelous, another single and a really good one. Track seven's the one that I didn't particularly like. I don't know why, there was nothing inherently wrong with it. Feeling lazy, I don't know if it was the lyrics that seemed a bit too twee or just the melody wasn't catching me. I didn't particularly enjoy that. Track eight is My Best Day. Interestingly, that's a duet with Alison Moyet. Of course, Alison Moyet, massively successful singer here in the UK and internationally, particularly in the 80s, first with Yazoo, and then her solo career soon after that. Penultimate track is Punch and Judy, fantastic stuff. Really, really catchy stuff on this album from start to finish. If you like good indie pop music that's probably leaning more towards pop than indie, if I'm honest, then there's nothing to dislike about Lightning Seeds overall, really. And track 10 is kind of like a somewhat ambient closer. It's a little bit kind of lacking and it sort of ends a little bit abruptly, but it's not unpleasant at all. Telling Tales is the closing track and it's a bit of a damp squib to end it but overall a really strong album most of this could have been released as singles in my opinion Lightning Seeds Jollification, we've covered their first mini disc album or their third studio album here on this special weekly series of Mini Disc Monday here in October for Lightning Seeds Month. Of course, I would love it if you could join me again in seven days' time to see which Lightning Seeds album I'm going to review for you next. But I want to say thank you to all of you for watching. Special thanks go to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. Let me know in the comments what you think about Lightning Seeds Month. Is it a good idea? I know they're not the biggest band in the world or the most well-remembered or even well-respected, but I've got a lot of time for Ian Browdy. Brilliant songwriter, brilliant producer, brilliant musician, and I look forward to celebrating a lot of his work over the course of this month. So please, will you join me again in a week's time for the next Lightning Seeds flavoured instalment of Mini Disc Monday. Cheers everyone. See ya!